In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Today we remember Tony Gay at this Mass, and uh, together as we enter into these mysteries, this is a moment for us, especially on a Saturday, to ask the Blessed Mother to walk through us during this Lenten journey. Uh, we ask for her intercession uh, as we turn to our Heavenly Father. So let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Turn our hearts to you, Eternal Father, and grant that, seeking always the one thing necessary in carrying out works of charity, we may be dedicated to your worship. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, This day the Lord your God commands you to observe these statutes and decrees. Be careful then to observe them with all your heart and with all your soul. Today you are making this agreement with the Lord. He is to be your God and you are to walk in his ways and observe his statutes, commandments, and decrees and to hearken to his voice. And today, the Lord is making this agreement with you. You are to be a people peculiarly his own, as he promised you. And provided you keep all his commandments, he will then raise you high in praise and renown and glory above all other nations he has made. And you will be a people sacred to the Lord your God, as he promised. The word of the Lord. A responsorial psalm. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who observe his decrees, who seek him with all their heart. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. You have commanded that your precepts be diligently kept. Oh, that I might be firm in the ways of keeping your statutes. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. I will give you thanks with an upright heart. When I have learned your just ordinances, I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. and praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that, they may, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers and sisters only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? 
So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Yeah, there's a heresy called Pelagianism that says we can earn our salvation. So it focuses on what we do for the Lord and that somehow we um, receive in payment for our efforts. Uh, this, is, this is what the Lord gives us. So, um, and there might be a way in which we might subtly interpret what Moses is saying in that sense. The idea of that we're, we're doing our part and somehow earning from the Lord um, his favor. And it almost seems as though it's a, it's a the, in this covenant that is made, there's this kind of agreement that is here. So I will be your God, and you are to walk, in, as Moses is saying, you are to walk in his ways, the ways of the Lord, observing his statutes, and so forth. Um, and so, um, the, uh, so this is the agreement that is made uh, between them and the Lord, uh, so that way they might be a people peculiar, peculiarly his own. And then here's the part where we might fall into that little subtle trap. Provided you keep all his commandments, then he will raise you on high. So, in other words, it's a, you might say it gives the impression that there might be a condition attached. Like, God will love us so long as we do for him, then he will do for us. And the reason why I point that out is because I think we know when we stop and think about the unconditional love of the Lord, we say, well, that can't be the case. That's not what we know from other things, we think about the way that the Lord gave himself completely and totally as a free gift to us, especially on the cross. So what we experience from the Lord isn't a condition, Lord, I'll do for you if you do for me. So then what do we make of this? Well, the best comparison I could think of for this would be the way that parents look after their children. So do parents tell their children, do they give them laws and commands and things that they are to obey, just as Moses was doing? Yes, they do. But is that because they love their children conditionally? The answer there, I think, is, is no, at least hopefully no. Um, so why do they do that? They give them these guidelines and rules for their safety and for their protection and for their good. And that's, I think, the best way for us to interpret the, this covenant and even the things we can say that the Lord asks of us by way of sacrifice in the season of Lent. So does God want to make us miserable to put us to the test? And if you give up enough for me, well, then I will bless you. Conditional love? No, that's, that's not it at all. Instead, we can say that the Lord gives us these various things because he wants the best for us. So this is not a bad thing that the Lord gives these ordinances, statutes, commands, and decrees. Of course, blessed are those who follow them. We hear the psalm constantly extol the law of the Lord because it is for our good. So if we take that sentiment, well then let me take this into a New Testament commandment. And let's see what the Lord is asking us. Is he asking us to do something for us? In other words, if you do this thing that I command you to do, then your Heavenly Father will look, look kindly on you. So pray for those who persecute you, that then you may be children of the Heavenly Father. So, so I want you to love your enemies and pray for your persecutors. I'm going to ask you to do this hard thing. And if you do that, well, then you will become children of the Heavenly Father. A conditional response, meaning only if you do for the Lord, then he will do for you. And I say no. I say no, that doesn't make sense. Instead, if we say that the commands of the Lord are actually for our good, that it is for our profit, then it is actually good for us. It is an intrinsically good thing for us to show love even to those who don't show love to us to love our enemies, and to pray for those who persecute you. We derive a benefit from this. And this is the part that I think may seem kind of shocking, because, well, what good is that for us? I mean, okay, we're being put to the test here in this moment, so why would it be good that we would experience that? Well, by showing unconditional love to others, then we actually are reflecting the unconditional love that the Father has for us. This is to become like the Father to love in the way that the Father loves. And this is what we were meant for. So we're meant to love God and to love our neighbor and, and not to think of ourselves or to attach conditions in these ways, but in fact to abound in love. And that is for our benefit. We are the richer for having done this. So that way we might be perfect as the Heavenly Father is perfect. Um, that word can also be translated to, to be perfect or to achieve our end. In other words, to be what you were meant to be, just as the Heavenly Father is 
who he is. We are to be who the Father has called us to be, and we do that in particular when we, offer, when we carry our crosses, when we offer up sacrifices, uh, when we embrace things that are difficult. So does the Lord ask us to go through Lent? Says, I'm going to punish you for a little while, and you better put up with it, and that's how I'll see if you're really serious about this. No, 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 that's the conditional response that I was saying before. Rather, the idea of embracing our crosses, embracing our penances, giving things up, and, and confronting obstacles and things that are difficult, this, in fact, is a noble thing. We are the richer for it. We might even consider that when the Lord puts these challenges before us, this is a gift. It's kind of a, it's a strange way to think about that. But if we can wrap our minds around this mystery in the invitation that we have to follow Christ, who himself even went to the death, to his death on the cross, then in the cross we can actually see riches and delights. This is part of becoming who, who we were meant to become, being who we are meant to be. Um, and we do that not by putting ourselves first. That's our instinct. But God's instinct is to uh, seek to serve rather than to be served, to love rather than to love ourselves or focus only on our own comforts or delights. So may the Lord help us to reapprise the value of the cross, especially in this Lenten season. We stand to present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church and the Holy People of God that we might embrace the cross of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord might teach us the wisdom of his law and give us the courage to embrace it always. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are coming to a deeper knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, for those in our RCIA class, for those preparing to enter the church at the Easter Vigil. We pray to the Lord. We pray for blessings upon the Diocese of Peoria, for, our, for Bishop Tilka, the beginning of his ministry as the Bishop of Peoria, for an increase in vocations in this diocese. We pray to the Lord. We pray for peace throughout the world, especially for the protection and the safeguarding of innocent civilians, uh, for peace throughout the world, for an end to violence and hostility. We pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed, especially for Tony and for all of those for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. And for the protection of our religious liberties, let us pray together. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who roam throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands May these blessed mysteries, by which we are restored, O Lord, we pray, make us worthy of the gift they bestow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and the purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Louis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with, the, with all the saints and with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Show unceasing favor, O Lord, to those you refresh with this divine mystery, and accompany with salutary consolations those you have imbued with heavenly teaching, through Christ our Lord. Amen. This Saturday, we also ask the Blessed Mother to watch over us during this Lenten pilgrimage. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. God bound for the blessing. May the blessing for which they have long strengthened your faithful, O God, so that never straying from your will, they may always rejoice in your benefits. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Amen.